The other day I uploaded a video on Fragpunk, a new and in my opinion innovative game, and I immediately started getting comments like, it's a casual version of Valorant. It definitely has potential, but to me as of now it feels like a weird version of Valorant and a clunky version of Call of Duty in terms of movement. I'm worried about the gunplay being too much like Call of Duty in the space of tactical shooters. And I feel like this might be a bit of a problem in gaming right now. What the commenter is doing or saying isn't wrong at all, they're just comparing the game I've shown them to ones that they know in order to try and express their opinions. But I feel like this often ends up going further than that, to the point where comparisons shift our perspective on games so much that we can't appreciate them for what they are. Before I go any further, just indulge me for a bit while I talk about English language. I spent a long while teaching English language at A level, 16 to 18 year olds, and my main fascination with it is how misunderstood the core way it works is. Lots of people seem to think that there's some authority, maybe Cambridge or Oxford University, that set the rules of language and we should all follow them or we're wrong. You hear this a lot in arguments where people will whip out a dictionary definition of something and argue that whatever you were trying to say is irrelevant because the dictionary definition is different to what you were saying. Or you get people correcting other people's punctuation and grammar, patronising them by explaining rules that apparently they should have learned when they were a child. I get this a lot in videos because I say beta, because I'm English and that's the way we say beta. I know Americans are taught to say beta instead, that's a little bit unusual to me, but it's fine, I still understand what you're saying, but I still get some Americans coming into my comments and saying, actually it's pronounced beta, you're wrong. And I find that so weird, like on whose authority am I wrong? Who's the person who's decided which way it should be said that supposedly I should be following? It's a fairly broad problem across the entire internet where context, intention, nuance is completely abandoned in favour of simple binary rules. People like to think things are either wrong or right. Everything's the best or the worst. It's trash or it's above criticism. It's absolutely moral, the good thing to do, or it's completely evil. Language just doesn't work this way at all. Even the supposed authorities, Cambridge and Oxford universities, can't agree. That's why the Oxford comma exists. It's pointing out that there's a difference in the way Oxford University and Oxford University Printing Press does things compared to other companies. The rules of grammar and dictionary definitions are just an attempt to describe how language is used by people. It's impossible to record and quantify every single way every single person or group uses language in every single situation, so there's a general consensus on the average way language is used, which appears as dictionary definitions, pronunciation guides and grammar rules. But they're constantly shifting and changing because people are constantly using language in different ways. There's absolutely no better way to expose your ignorance about language than by trying to tell someone else that they're using it wrong. The whole point of language is to try and communicate your thoughts to somebody else. If they've understood you, then everything's fine, regardless of what you said or how you said it. If they didn't understand, then you both have to work on it, you know, depending on how much you care about understanding the message, until you come to an understanding. So why is any of this relevant to games? Because when people are talking about games, they're trying to communicate how they feel about them, and that's often very difficult to articulate. Comparisons and genres are super helpful because they can help establish like a common ground with the person or people you're communicating with that you can build from, but often they're misused. Take Mortal Kombat as an example. If you were talking to someone who doesn't know a lot about video games and you were trying to explain to them what Mortal Kombat was, you might not be able to say that it's a fighting game because surely Call of Duty is a fighting game, World of Tanks is a fighting game. They might not understand genres in the same way you do, so that's not massively helpful. Genres aren't helpful unless they're understood the same way by both sides. So you might say Mortal Kombat is like Street Fighter. To most normal people, that comparison makes perfect sense. They're both 2D fighting games where you go up against another single opponent and try to beat them up and get rid of their health bar before they do the same to you, and both have lots of characters to choose from and special moves. To even a hardcore fighting game fan who's also a normal people, they'd probably understand the general point you're trying to make. 
But for a poorly socially adjusted person on the internet, it's very easy for them to jump to, well, you don't know anything about Mortal Kombat. It's completely different from Street Fighter. The frame timings are completely different. It's got a different flow, different strategies, a completely different audience. That person isn't exactly wrong, but they've misunderstood the point, the context, the meaning that you were trying to convey. Sadly, on the internet, there's a lot of people who insist on understanding things only in their own context, and they struggle to imagine anybody else's perspective. So they miss out on everything you were trying to communicate. Which brings me back to that YouTube comment. If they said, Fragpunk is a casual version of Valorant, it definitely has potential, but to me, as of now, feels like a weird version of Valorant and a clunky version of Call of Duty, them saying Fragpunk is a casual version of Valorant could definitely be a reasonable thing to say. I think I said something similar in my video. I said, it's a bit like Valorant, but more accessible. But I can imagine how people could misinterpret that. Valorant is quite a hardcore competitive game that builds on the shooting mechanics of games like Counter-Strike, but adds in Overwatch style abilities and hero characters. There I go immediately making comparisons again. Fragpunk has a lot in common with Valorant. There's rounds, there's no respawns, hero characters with abilities, the potential for one-shot kills, the objective of planting a bomb or defending sites. But it doesn't really feel that much like Valorant to play, at least to me. For me, Valorant is pure stress, a constant reinforcement that I'm not very good at Valorant. Fragpunk is a chance to have a laugh with your team and experience crazy things happening with all the card modifiers while you compete against others. It's a very different experience that I'd say is much more accessible because it seems to be constantly celebrating what you did well instead of reminding you that you suck. But when this commenter says that Fragpunk is a casual version of Valorant, Casual is sometimes used in online communities to mean like dumbed down or stupid. They sometimes use it as an insult to say it wouldn't be of interest to more serious gamers. Maybe it lacks depth or competitiveness. To me, that's entirely wrong. The game has plenty of depth and the competition can be fierce. My understanding of the word casual could get me into an argument with that commenter, even though we might understand completely different things from what was said. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't matter at all. But when I'm recommending a new game, my videos can have an influence, and people who are on the fence about trying it might read the comments to see what other people think, and then regardless of what the commenter intended from what they were saying, they might see the comparison to Valorant being a bad thing and think, oh well, I guess I might as well just play Valorant then, or, well, I didn't like Valorant, so I'm not going to try this, just writing the game off entirely. And I find this so, so interesting. Instead of a comparison being used to help someone to understand my feelings on a game, they can often end up limiting someone's experience of it instead, narrowing their perspective to, okay, is this better or worse than Valorant, instead of appreciating it on its own terms. Of course, there's plenty of reasons people still make comparisons though. Game news and review sites do it for search engine optimization, name dropping as many games as possible to get more clicks. People do it to bait out engagement, saying, hey, if you like that, then you'll love this to entice people in, or everybody who plays that needs to be playing this to grab the audience of the thing that it's being compared to. I did it myself when I was covering Delta Force. I was like, hey, if you enjoyed DMZ, maybe you'll enjoy this. And I was doing that kind of cynically to try and get, okay, the people who watched my videos before about DMZ, they would be a good audience to watch this video. They might enjoy this video. It will get me more views. Some people also just get weirdly tribal about video games. Every new first-person shooter has to be compared to Call of Duty or Valorant or Siege or Apex or Counter-Strike GO. Every new survival game is going to be compared to DayZ and Rust and Subnautica. Every Souls-like is going to be compared to, well, Dark Souls and Elden Ring as well. And of course, games are expensive, both in terms of money and time. You don't want to waste your time or money on a brand new game if you don't think you're going to like it. And comparisons can help you make that decision. But it can also mean that you miss out on things. Imagine if you only listened to one hip-hop song, didn't like it, and then decided to never listen to hip-hop again. Like, that would be a real shame. You'd be missing out on some amazing music. Or if you read a Stephen King book and you did like it, and so from then on, you never read anything that wasn't Stephen King. So you were like, oh, well, I like Stephen King books, therefore I don't like books that aren't Stephen King. That would be insane. You'd be missing out on so much. So instead of allowing ourselves the opportunity to explore new ideas and experiences in gaming, 
we often end up pigeonholing them immediately. We work out what they remind us of as soon as we see them, and then we decide if it's better or worse than that thing. And as I said, I'm as guilty of this as anybody. I'm more kind of thinking through, oh, this is a weird thing that I do and it's probably a bad thing. This means we can often miss important aspects of games just because they don't quite fit into the comparison that we already have in our heads. Yesterday I did a video on Unrailed 2, and it'd be easy to look at that and say it's like Overcooked, and people could immediately start drawing comparisons with the graphics, the controls, the difficulty, without considering the full experience Unrailed gives you. Unrailed is about storming around in a landscape with your friends, desperately trying to get a train through in one piece. That's nothing like Overcooked. While you could say the genre is similar to Overcooked, the controls look are like it, it even looks a bit like it, the actual experience of playing the game is very, very different. It'd be easy to say, oh, well, the graphics aren't as good as Overcooked. It probably won't have as big of an audience as Overcooked. It comes after Overcooked, so it's obviously less creative. Maybe you don't like the music as much. But does any of that matter at all if you enjoy playing Unrailed when you're not thinking about that comparison? Thinking about the comparison actively makes your perspective of the game worse. I've been thinking about this a lot with Black Ops 6 coming out next week. This morning I started my series where I'm playing through every Black Ops story that's relevant to Black Ops 6, so we played Black Ops 1 this morning, and then when Black Ops 6 comes out, should I be comparing it to Black Ops Cold War because it's a direct sequel to that game? Do I compare it to Modern Warfare 3 because that's the most recent Call of Duty? Do I compare it to Black Ops 1 because that's obviously what it's kind of trying to remind us of, trying to hark back to? Or maybe I should just take it on its own terms and experience it for what it is, a new game. If I forget about what I think about the controls and the shooting and the graphics and the music and everything like that of all of those other Call of Duty games, maybe I can just decide, do I enjoy Black Ops 6 as it is by itself? Obviously, you can still think, okay, the story's carrying over and stuff like that. And maybe you can appreciate some of the things that have improved over time because they weren't as good in the previous ones. But the more you try and think about it in terms of, okay, how big is the difference to those other games? Or are there things about those other games that I liked more? All that's doing is limiting your enjoyment of the new game rather than just letting yourself experience it for what it is. Now, please don't misunderstand or misinterpret what I'm trying to say in this video. That would be terrible considering what I was talking about at the start. But maybe just try to hold back for a moment before you think about a new game in terms of everything you've played before. I'm not saying comparisons are bad. There's obviously a use for them. I'm saying they can be limiting. And perhaps there's more interesting ways to talk and think about games that might help you to appreciate them for what they are instead of what they're not.